Are you stuck with a bad president? Do you sometimes feel like you're living in an alternate universe? Have you been experiencing increased stress-related symptoms or illnesses based on the decisions of the leadership in your country? There are many people suffering with you who have the same issues and concerns. They live in your community, in your country, and across the globe. Your suffering is shared, and so will be your victory when things improve. This conversation is to help guide you in exploring your feelings and senses so that you can work on reaching towards positive outcomes and solutions in your personal life. All problems cannot be easily solved, but mindful preparedness can ease tension, decrease anxiety, improve problem-solving skills, and increase your resiliency. The first step to exploring the heart and mind is to engage in quietness. Find a space where you can relax and quiet your body and your mind. Close your eyes and feel the senses around your eyes, your cheeks, and your mouth. Take a deep breath, and as you breathe in, breathe in life, breathe in peace, and breathe in calm. As you breathe out, focus on blowing the tension out of every muscle in your face, every cell, feel the tension leaving. Imagine seeing the pieces of tension falling from your face onto the floor. Falling from every muscle that you're relaxing. And then a giant broom comes and sweeps that tension away. And as you breathe in, those healthy cells come in and rejuvenate and fill up the empty spaces. Focus on each breath and regulating it as you recognize the muscles in your neck and shoulders and around your chest. Feel your lungs expand as you breathe in. And again, blow out, blow out all the tension and imagine that broom sweeping it away. As you regulate your breathing, allow the air to go deeper and deeper into your belly. Feel your rib cage expand, and then as you force the air out, think about blowing out a hundred candles on a cake. Blow all that air out. Take another deep breath in. Feel the oxygen moving in your body and going to your brain. Expel the air, then take another life-building breath into your lungs, expanding your lungs, expanding your potential, expanding your power to heal yourself, your mind, your soul, and your body. Allow each exhale to push out the tension in your neck, your shoulder, chest, arms, hands. Feel it in your torso, your hips, your legs, and your feet. When you breathe in, you're breathing in peace, comfort, and life. And when you force that air out, you are forcing out the tension, the anxiety, and the stress. You are making an active decision, taking an action to heal your body, and you're doing it with your breath. Now that your body is in the process of calming itself, your mind can begin to explore your feelings and work towards your personal plan of action for positive growth. Let's explore the problem. When exploring a problem, the mind can easily get drawn into a cycle of repeating negative thought processes. When this happens, you're only increasing your stress and increasing anxiety. To 
to avoid this negative cycle, let's consider some strategies for problem exploration. First, we have to recognize the problem. We have to know that there's an issue and that there needs to be a solution. Next, we have to recognize, is it something that we can personally change or not? Sometimes problems are bigger than us. And so the only power you have is the power to facilitate change in your own body, which can begin to expand outward and have exponential positive growth potential. Let's explore your power and ability to facilitate change. This could mean change in your personal life or change on a larger scale. Consider the following questions and allow yourself to process this information throughout the day so that you can measure and recognize your abilities to solve the problems you are facing. This exercise can also help you to recognize when it's important to ask for help. Questions to answer. Is this a problem I can solve on my own? Or do I need help with this situation? Do I need expertise or expert advice from another person? Or do I have the expertise to solve this problem? What skills do I personally bring to the table? What insight do I have into the problem? Can I affect this situation in any way? Do I have the ability to change anything? Is there something that I need to do to help solve the problem? Something that I can do? Something that I could learn? Something that I could research? Is there someone that can help me in the process? A professional? A group that I can join? A community? Or is there someone that I can help in their process? Do I have expertise or skills that I can teach to another person to help them? What actions can I take that can lead to a positive solution? As we're going through this process, consider those questions. Think about it in the back of your mind. Let's define the problem. In this case, the problem is that you have a bad president and that you are stuck with him until the next election. You may also recognize the bigger problem associated with that, and that is that the nation and the world can see devastating effects based on the decisions this president and his subordinates make in such a short amount of time. In this situation, you may feel powerless. This is a valid problem and a valid concern. Problem two, in addition to the national and global concerns you have, this may also have affected you in the area of your personal relationships. Perhaps some of your friends or loved ones support this president and you have pain, concern, and confusion as you wonder how your loved ones can support this situation. This is a valid problem and a valid concern. Problem three. You may also be experiencing negative feelings or symptoms caused by the overall global unrest as a result of the recent election and the current situations that seem to change on a daily basis. This is a valid problem and a valid concern. There are many other issues that could be explored here, but our focus will be on the three problems presented as they are foundational to the overall global discord in this situation and likely foundational to the cause of your unrest. Problem one, what can we do about it? Yes, you have a bad president. Let go of the shock 
and accept that you are stuck with him until the next election. The nation and the world may or may not see devastating effects based on the decisions this president and his subordinates make. But realistically speaking, positive supports can be created in your community to decrease the potential damage. Evidence in point, more people are engaging in political and human activism. More people are using their voices to protect the rights of humanity at a local and national level. And more people are working towards solutions to save our planet. This is where you come in. What skills, traits, strengths do you carry that can help build your community? Even if that's in your small community of your family, a friend, or a loved one, those closest around you, or the people you work with. How do you promote your values? And how do you protect the ideals that are important to you? You can recognize your personal impact on the planet and on the people who live and work around you, the people you associate with, from the people closest to you who live in your home to the people you interact with in the grocery store or at the drive through Do you recycle? Do you treat the water coming out of your faucet with the respect that it deserves? Do you value the air that you breathe or the sun shining on your face? Do you value the freedom to enjoy nature and walk in the woods or to go look at a healthy, thriving coastline? Are these things that are valuable to you? Are you aware of where your food comes from? Do you recognize that every small action that billions of people make can have an exponential effect on the world and the people around us? Do you see that you actually matter? You may feel small, but even in your tiny, tiny place on this giant world, your actions matter. You can actually make a difference with the actions and the steps you take on a daily basis, and that is power. For those who feel powerless, recognize and harness that power you have in your choices and your actions. You personally have the power to make a difference every time you hit the print button on your computer, every time you utilize the resources on this planet, every time you eat a meal, every time you drive, or walk, or bicycle. You have the choice to make a decision that uses the resources we have on this planet responsibly. That is power. Recognize and harness that strength that you have. Next, you can use your skills and your voice. Life is very busy. For many people, it's hard to imagine engaging in political advocacy or community activism. In this case, it's important to realize that no job or deed towards a positive outcome is too small. If you pick up the trash after an event, or if you cook a meal, or make telephone calls, write a letter, those are very small acts that each person can make to create community or to be a part of a community. If you deeply explore your skills, talents, traits, you may realize that there is at least one thing that you could do differently to affect someone or some situation in a positive way. Even the simple power and gift of a smile is available to the majority of the human population. So no matter what kind of environment or unhappy, challenging situation that is going on in the world around us, the simple power of a smile can have exponential positive results, not only for you, but for the person you've given that gift to. Next, considering the political situations that seem to ebb and flow on a daily basis, it's a problem. Much of your community is aware of that problem, and each person 
actually has the ability to use their voice. They can watch what's going on around them and learn from the situations. Each person has a choice to become active, informed consumers of information. Obtaining information from multiple sources, not just one news channel or one person or social media. It's important not to fall prey to bait and switch tactics that are going on in our information environment. These tactics attempt to draw the consumer of information away from the real issue and get swayed. Each person has a choice to become informed consumers of information, obtaining information from multiple sources. Don't fall prey to bait and switch tactics that are attempting to get you to look in one direction so that you miss the true issues at hand. We have a situation that is filled with sensationalism and laced with propaganda. Too many people fall prey to the shiny, obvious problem before them. They fail to recognize the root of the issues. For example, an inexperienced gardener may see that their plant is dying and try to treat the plant, but eventually their plant dies. They may try and go and purchase a different plant and plant it in the same place and then find that the same situation happens. An experienced gardener will recognize that the problem may not be in the plant, but in the soil. A plant cannot grow and thrive without the proper soil to feed and nourish its growth. That is an example of what the current political situation is. There are many obvious problems that a majority of the population can recognize. The focus gets placed on the problems that the population can see, but the political consumer may lack the depth of understanding and knowledge for complex government systems. For example, tax policies, global relationships, economics, etc. Experienced scientists, economists, and specialists may understand the root of the problem in each of their perspective areas of expertise, but because they are unable to share truth in a way that is palpable to the community, because the array of information that is thrown at the people constantly is confusing. This makes it nearly impossible to filter through, to find truth. However, each consumer of information has the choice to seek the truth. They can dig deeper and share their expertise and knowledge with others, building their community, knowing and understanding that there are like-minded people who want to raise their families and live in a world that is thriving, healthy, and happy. The nation may be facing huge problems, but together, we are stronger. If you feel helpless in your personal life, explore some ideas, groups that you can join, or organizations that you support who share your perspective. Even one small act can help you personally heal and recover from the stressors in this political environment. Because you have the capacity to explore your problems and seek out positive solutions. Participating in the solution is power. Another simple thing you can do is vote. You can encourage everyone you know to vote. Don't fall prey to the lie that my vote doesn't matter. Your voice does matter, especially when it's joined with the other voices in your community. If your community has voter policies that make it difficult for you to vote, support legislation and vote for representatives who support voting by mail. Bottom line, solutions are possible. They can be varied and there is so much potential. As long as those people with positive ideas are willing to share them with their community and together work towards a positive solution. Problem two, your personal relationships. What on earth can you do about it? You may have pain, 
concern and confusion and not understand why your friends and loved ones can possibly support this current president and the current political environment. Perhaps it's damaged your relationship. The first thing to recognize is that the only person that you can truly change is yourself. The only mind you can control is your own. It takes active decision making to control your own mind. Your mind can have a tendency to wander, to take you to places that you don't want to go, or to replay worries and thoughts or anxieties over and over, which only leads to physical, emotional, and personal issues. It's a negative feedback loop. The tension you feel inside belongs to you. You are the owner. As the owner, it's your responsibility to either feed the tension or calm it. No matter what anyone else believes or thinks or how they act, you are the owner of your response. If your family members, friends, loved ones, coworkers have differing opinions from you, it's your choice to let it bother you or not. Perhaps there have been arguments, disagreements, discussions. Are you capable of having your own opinion and sharing it without having an emotional outburst? If you are, that's a great skill to have, but you can probably visit a time in your past that you didn't control yourself as you wish you would have. If you're like the majority of the population, you've likely gotten emotional in a disagreement and argued with friends or loved ones, either in person or through technology or social media. Only you know if the relationship with the person you argued with is one that is deeply meaningful to you or if it's a relationship that is superficial. In these instances, it might help you to measure your level of feistiness with the audience you're having a disagreement with. In my case, I love a family member much more than my need to make a political stance or my need to be right with quotes around it. In that relationship, I choose not to engage in any political discussion with that person because I know it will not turn out well for either of us. And quite frankly, that relationship is just too important to me to threaten it over the current political climate. Only you can explore your relationships and the depth of love in each situation to measure if it's truly important to be right, with quotations around it, or not in an argument. In all reality, your argument may be the absolute truth to you and to a high percentage of the population. But is being right so important to you that it overpowers the level of love you feel for your loved ones? It may be healthier for your well-being to reserve your political arguments for different situations. That being said, the community can engage in arguments with each other on social media or in person about the problems that this world faces. But when these arguments occur, it is merely a reaction to what is going on in the world around us at any given moment. The only true solutions come from action. Explore in your mind if your relationships are worth damaging over reactions to the current circumstances we face, or would your energy be better utilized by taking action? For example, do you think that you would feel happier if you argued with someone on social media and won? Whatever that means. Or would you be happier if you decided that you were going to use your skills and interests to take actions that promote a positive change in the world around you. Does that seem daunting? Maybe there's no time, you feel like you can't take an action? One simple action would be to get your face out of your device and spend a little quality time with someone you love. This is the simplest action each person can take to allow themselves the ability to let the ugly stuff go 
and recognize the gifts we have in the relationships that we have and the people who we spend our time with and the activities that we love doing and that bring us joy. Those are the things that bring meaning to the everyday moments in life. So ask yourself, how much time are you actually spending on your device, either watching TV or engaging in arguments on social media, and then measure that with the time you're actually spending with the people who live around you, your children, your significant other, your loved ones, your friends. Engaging in the joys of life can help you to increase your quality of life and your joy. And as your mind gets that opportunity to rest and relax, it becomes more creative and resilient. And you actually might come up with an amazing idea that can be positive for your community. But your brain needs that time to rest and rejuvenate and heal from the stressors around us. Problem three, you may be experiencing negative feelings or symptoms caused by the overall global unrest as a result of the recent election and the current situations. For this, we're going to consider everything that has been discussed thus far. And we're going to go back to the quietness exercise. For your body and mind to heal and recover, it requires rest. So focus on quieting your mind and engage your body in breathing. The brain processes the problems and can problem solve when it's in a quiet state. Focusing on your mental health and your well being brings positive results to your physical health. Your mind and your body are connected and work together in a constant feedback loop. To focus your mind, start with quieting your thoughts and focusing on your breath. Close your eyes and feel the senses around your eyes, cheeks, and mouth. Take a deep breath, and as you breathe in, breathe in rest, relaxation, focus, peace, love. And when you breathe out, focus on blowing the tension of every muscle cell in your face and your neck and your shoulders and your back. Blow it all out. Feel it in your ribs and your torso and your hips, your legs and your feet. Take your breath in. Breathe in peace and relaxation and exhale tension. Imagine the tension falling in little pieces on the floor and a giant broom comes and sweeps it away. Breathe in more peace, love, comfort, calm. Breathe out tension, stress. As you breathe in, think about the healthy cells that are coming in and rejuvenating and filling up your empty spaces. Focus on regulating your breathing and allowing the air to go deeper and deeper into your belly, expanding your rib cage, and then force the air out. You're forcing it out, imagining that you're blowing out a hundred candles. You're expelling the air and then inhaling, taking another life building deep breath into your body expanding your body expanding your lungs expanding your mind healing your mind healing your soul healing your body the breath heals allow each exhale to push out the tension all of your body structures, every place you feel pain or tension. Imagine the breath coming and working on that spot, taking out the tension and filling it with calm, comfort, and peace. Now that your body is in the process of calming itself, your mind can begin to explore your feelings 
and work towards your personal plan of action for positive growth. And you ask yourself, what actions can I take today? What action can I take right now to heal my body, mind, and soul? Right now, it starts with the breath. It starts with breathing. It starts with allowing your mind to expand, allowing your mind to be creative, and allowing your mind to be accepting. Accept the fact that you have power for change. You have that personal power within you. You have beautiful skills. These things that you bring to the table are special and they are gifts that you can share with your loved ones and your community. So what action can you take right now? Can you hug a loved one and tell them how much they mean to you? Can you share a smile or a kind word? Can you decide not to engage in a useless argument that will have no positive result? Are you going to react to challenging situations or are you going to start making active decisions and actively decide to not let it get to you? You can actively decide to make positive choices. You could actively decide to take a vacation from the drama and find something worth being thankful for. Do an exercise of thankfulness. Try to build an attitude of gratitude. When you wake up and instead of letting your brain go to all these stressors or worries, instead think about three things that you are thankful for. Even if you're thankful that you can breathe or that you can walk or think. Find something that you are thankful for. If you have the capacity to get up and get out of bed, that is something to be thankful for. If you have the capacity to type and write and share your mind, that is something to be thankful for. That is power. That is strength. Take those strengths that you have. Think about them. Think about your strengths. Think about your gifts. Think about your attributes. You may not change the world on a grand scale, but you can change your world by how you interact in it. Yes, you may have a bad president. The nation itself may be in a challenging situation, but each person has strength. Please find yours. Give yourself the permission to find your strength, to find your own power to heal your mind and your soul. Engage in love. Be respectful of the world around us and a responsible consumer of products and information. Those are powerful tools that you can utilize every single day. Now, what else can you do? Only you know. What can you do? How can you share this skill or this gift with others? And give yourself the freedom to explore that idea.
Thank you.